As you can tell, I'm liking this little transistor tester, component tester. I like it a lot. There is even more to it. If we press and long hold the power button, we get to uh, a menu where we can test the frequency. There is a port inside. Uh, I need to wire a connector for that. I've opened the unit up and you can see in the photo of the front of the board the frequency input is on the uh, left hand side nearest the screw here and the signal ground is to the right of it. So let's get that soldered in place. At the moment I don't have a proper connector to, to fit to the case so I'm just going to literally pass the wire through outside and, and test in that fashion. To test the frequency counter on our little tester here I've just hooked up the uh, function generator that I built and set it to fairly standard 1 kilohertz square wave at 5 volts. So if we long press the tester and select frequency we can see 1000 hertz so all is good. On the function generator the step is set to 1000 hertz at the moment so if we can go up to 2 wait for this to do its sampling, that's 2 kilohertz, 3, 4, 5 kilohertz. Uh, so it all looks good there. Let's try a higher step. Let's go to 10. So we've now got a 10 kilohertz step. So that takes us to 15 kilohertz. Fifteen zero zero zero. all appears to be good. I always like to double check things if I can. So I have another meter here which is capable of measuring frequency. So let's just see what this guy makes of things. And 15 kilohertz as well. So everything is in agreement. Happy days. So let's go up some more. Let's go up to say 55 kilohertz and we've got a small difference here 55.002 so I wonder how high we can go let's set the step now so we're now in the 100 kilohertz step I read that the highest frequency that this can generate is around 200 kilohertz if anybody knows what the upper frequency is supposed to be for this then please leave a comment so we're now at 555 kilohertz and everything is still happy. Let's go for broke. So it appears that the function generator can go up to uh, just about one megahertz. Uh, what the upper limit of the tester is, uh, I don't know. If anybody knows what the upper frequency limit of the tester is, then uh, again, please leave a comment. Let's turn our attention now to the frequency generator side of it. So again we've set it up to a standard 1 kilohertz output and we're seeing that on the, on the reference meter there. If you're curious as I am then uh, we can see that it's uh, a normal square wave output on the oscilloscope here and that's 1 volt per division so 4.5 volts is the amplitude there. Now changing the frequency to be honest seems to be a bit clunky. Uh, I, I couldn't find any instructions on how to do this so it's I've gone by uh, by guess and by God. But if we press and long hold we get an extra digit here so we can go up and that is now 11 kilohertz but minus 10s. I can't imagine why it has this sort of minus offset but there we go. 21 but plus 5. There must be some reason behind it. Again, please leave a comment if you understand why this happens. Right, so now we're into the hundreds of kilohertz. So again, 131 minus 2000, 129 kilohertz. And the highest frequency that this can generate is 2 megahertz. So here we are at the top, top level, 2 megahertz. Um, so it seems to work reasonably well if uh, if not for the interface being somewhat clunky. Let's look now at the 10-bit uh, pulse width modulation. It starts off at 50%, so 
as we expect a square wave there and as we increment we can see the pulse width getting greater until we reach 99% and obviously we have a very sharp pulse there and we can do the same in the reverse direction. Now quite what use this is I'm not entirely sure. Pulse width modulation is normally used perhaps in the control of a of a lamp or a, a motor to change the speed or the, or the brightness. Uh, quite why they've implemented it here I know not. If you know then please tell me in the comments. In the menu now we can look at some of the other options with this particular setting it's a capacitance only tester between pins one and three. This sort of mode I think is designed if you're doing a, a large number of components and you know what they're going to be rather than let the tester sit and, uh, and, and, and try and figure it out you can set in the menu here so it all, it's always going to be measuring capacitance. This is capacitance only and doesn't include the ESR measurement. If we wish to test capacitors uh, and, and include the ESR measurement then we have this menu option here again between pins 1 and 3. This menu option is for measuring resistance and additionally the inductance of the resistor as well again between pins 1 and 3. Transistor is fairly self-explanatory it sets the tester into transistor only mode. The show data option gives us the version of the firmware in use and the values that were detected when the self-test was run to calibrate the unit. Contrast. As this display shows we can uh, vary the contrast to suit your particular lighting conditions. So I hope you've enjoyed that overview of some of the advanced menu options for this transistor tester. Um, as I mentioned in the original build it's much more than just a transistor tester and I think in, in this menu the most um, interesting for me were the frequency and the frequency generator. When I started out on my electronics adventures many many moons ago I would have given my eye teeth to have something like this. I was lucky to be able to acquire an AVO after, after some time and that was just a, a simple analogue multimeter. Uh, this is, uh, is so much more.